Lenardi has dropped Cincinnati outside of the next four outs at the moment. Nine spots out of the NCAA tournament. As for TCU, Tim, uh, they're in good shape for the tournament right now, but they can't get too comfortable. Well, they've been consistent all season long. Lost a tough game earlier in the week to, at Texas Tech where they had a big lead in the second half. But this team has shown a lot of bounce back, a lot of resiliency, a lot of consistency, and they play defense, but they love to run. The number one fast break team in America, TCU, that loss to Texas Tech really left the Horn Frogs scratching their collective head. They were up by 10 with seven minutes to go. They out rebounded Tech by double digits. They outshot the Red Raiders, but they just faded down the stretch. And running right out of the gate, Micah Peavy with the slam. Talk about scripting the open play. That came right out of Jamie Dixon's playbook from way back in the day. Cincinnati a little sleep on the tip. You ever run that against you? We tried, but we stopped <laughs> it. Yeah, we knew it, was, it was in the game plan. Cincinnati at five and eight in the league. Eight to shoot. Simas Lukosius putting it up. And Aziz Bantego with the offensive rebound for the Bearcats. Dan Skillings Jr. way off the mark and the rebound for TCU. Well, Cincinnati a good rebounding team, plus nine on this season, but in their first matchup, got out-rebounded by TCU. Avery Anderson the third knocks down the triple. He and Jameer Nelson Jr. Tim starting together for the first time all year. I like it. I like the guard play. Just push the positive on the guard play. Worry about the defense later. Their, their defense will be good enough. Anderson wants another. Give it to him. Just a 29% shooter from downtown. Back to back triples and an early today. Well, you talk about, you asked earlier about if Jamie ever ran that tip play against us. I don't remember, but I do remember his, the identity of his teams at Pittsburgh were defense, defense, punch you in the stomach, out rebounding, and just beat you in the half court with toughness, and it's all about defense. But he's changed his philosophy here. He's st obviously still a very good defensive coach, but they want to play fast. They want to shoot threes. They want to sp spread the floor and get the game in the 80s. Saw Wes Miller for Cincinnati trying to lead the Bearcats. Their first tournament appearance in five years. That'll help. Bandago finishing off the lob from Skillings. Well, Jamie wanted more ball pressure on the perimeter, and Miller a little late on the top. CC was without Ernest Uday Jr., the Kansas transfer, missing his second straight with a lower left leg injury. Steal by John Newman III, who had a big game in the win over TCU last month. Bandago fumbled it, out of bounds to the Horn Frogs. You leave this with a loose pass on the perimeter. You cannot do that against Cincinnati or any quality team in this league because a little loose bounce pass out on the perimeter, that's what will happen, a steal. That's him, TCU turned it over 19 times in that loss at Cincinnati in mid-January. PV from the outside. Well, both these teams have had nights where they just don't look themselves as far as the turnover game goes, and that's what Cincinnati did against Oklahoma State as well. Day Day Thomas was also ultra productive against TCU. Now Newman, late in the shot clock. Thomas stepped out of bounds. Another Cincinnati turnover. I just, I'm still wondering, maybe you can answer this for me. Okay. Why, why does this happen in the college game so much? But you never see that in the NBA. You never see the guys step out of bounds in the NBA. I mean, With a deeper three-point line exactly. in the NBA. It's, I don't know, experience of knowing the width of the court. It's like you can count on at least one of those plays per game, no matter what league you're watching in the college game. Well, the game has changed so much that you accentuate, really, the spacing. Most teams now put guys in the deep corner, and sometimes you lose track of where you are. Bandego with the catch and another flush for the seven-footer from Senegal. Good rim run and good job by Wes Miller trying to go right inside. He's got a huge size advantage. Bandego's not usually a guy they're going to look to throw the ball to that much, but very effective early. Cincinnati forces another turnover. Skillings with the spin. Could not convert. 
Anderson had the two threes that forced the early Cincinnati timeout. And the block shot by Skillings. Good job. Nelson's got to use a little bit of a pump fake and understand where Skillings is because he's got a big size advantage on him. Using that seven foot wingspan, Anderson digs it out for TCU. CTC leads college basketball, averaging 19 fast break points per game. They haven't gotten out and run it the last two games, really. Emmanuel Miller rolls it in. Oh, God, by Miller. He found some space in the middle of the floor. And there's CC spacing the floor in the corners, allowing the one on one move in the paint by Miller. Thomas couldn't get the step against Peavy, one of the premier defenders in the Big 12. Thomas for three, and he's fouled by Xavier Cork, sending us to an official timeout. Three free throws coming up after we step aside here in Fort Worth. Live sports. Let TCU beat us down the floor. They limited their fast break opportunities. And they actually had more fast breaks than TCU, which TCU, that's where they hang their hat as the number one fast break team in the country. But turnovers were an issue for Cincinnati. They were good defensively. And you can see that that game and this game are pretty much going to mirror each other. These teams are who they are at this point in the season. Day Day Thomas, the junior point guard with three free throws after Xavier Cork fouled him. Before the timeout, Thomas in his first year with Cincinnati after two years at Kilgore College here in Texas, about 150 miles to the east. He was a top five overall JUCO recruit. Had a very good season. You know, rock solid defense. You saw the other night, Dizzle James came in, did a good job against Oklahoma State, running the offense, scoring 10 points in like 14 minutes. But James is not where they want him to be yet defensively, although. Wes Miller said he's starting to get it as a freshman. So Thomas nails all three. And a three-point game. And Isam Mustafa with the hook. Coming off his best game of the season, Tim, at 10 points and eight rebounds against Texas Tech. Old school footwork, the little fake middle drop step with the window kiss. Skillings getting around Anderson, met by Mustafa, and Anderson blocked the shot. Out of bounds, it'll stay with Cincinnati, nine to shoot. Cincinnati's defense has been very good early in this game. Good ball pressure on the perimeter, not overextending on help, but recovering well, and then consistency from the backside with the protection at the rim. Skillings could not finish over Mustafa. Now, Jamie Dixon told his team yesterday at practice, first thing he said was last time we played these guys six weeks ago, they punked us. No easy buckets at the rim. You saw that there on that defensive possession. Uh, it looks like the officials are going to let a lot go today. There's a lot of physicality and bumping in the lane already. You better be strong. Don't look for a call. Look to finish. Under five to shoot for Anderson. Mustafa against Jamil Reynolds. Here is the dynamite freshman, Jizzel James, the son of the Pro Football Hall of Famer, Edgerin James. He's got a bright future. I really like his game. And he adapts to the defensive philosophies of Wes Miller. He's really going to flourish. Reynolds too strong. And a foul called against John Newman, the third of Cincinnati. Wait until he got Newman at driving O'Bannon off his spot on the short baseline. Now back to Jistle James. You can tell Cincinnati fans are clamoring for more of James on the court. He helped lead the rally in the second half against Oklahoma State. Wes Miller says he's just one little step away defensively from earning more playing time. Well, you know, if that's the case, obviously, to earn, you got to build some sort of philosophy of your team and create an identity and he west wants to create a defensive identity if you have somebody that's maybe a little bit of a, a loose link to your defensive philosophy then you can't you 
can't run with him that much until he gets it. And it seems like he's starting to get it. Uh, James is jet quick with the ball. Very hard to guard off the bounce on those high screen and rolls. He was in the ESPN 100 a year ago. Skillings drops in a three. Cincinnati within two. Skillings has played very well as of late. Just a confident sophomore who can play multiple positions. Very good defender. Mustafa down low against Reynolds again. Jacoby Coles off the bounce. Boy, Jacoby Coles really is a mismatch player, isn't he? Well, the Coles and Mustafa early giving Jamie Dixon some real solid minutes down low. Again, TCU without their starter, Ernest Uday in the middle. Skillings couldn't hit this time. You see Victor Locken on the floor for Cincinnati as a foul is called with Skillings hitting the deck. Lockett did not play in the loss to Oklahoma State on Wednesday. The blockout by Lockett. Last game, DNP after starting every game but one during the season. The UCF went on the road. I played late in the game for under 30 seconds. So Lockett getting early, an early chance to get back on the good side of West Miller. Now getting the touch here. Miller told us last night, hey, I'm going to go back to him. Passing out of the double, and Newman drills the three. A nice read by Locken. We're going back, sorry, Ted, going back to Locken, sometimes you have to do that as a coach. You try everything to get your message across, and he's just not getting there. So letting him watch might be the best thing, and then giving him the confidence and putting him back in here early. I like what Wes has done with that. Tie up here. Cincinnati has it thanks to the arrow. Yeah, he's done a good job of spacing the court, and there's Locken again going inside out. Good awareness, and Locken, a couple good plays right out of the gate. Now, Tim Miller told us last night, I want to see that pop back in Locken's step. I don't want to see him laboring on the floor. Thought he had his best practice in weeks yesterday, and that's what earned him some time here on the floor today. Oh, he's a good player. He's, he's proven it, but you've got to be consistent in this league. You can't have off nights or off practices, and it looks like it's worked, that philosophy so far. KD Thomas way off. TCU on the break where they flourish. Coles. Again, Lockin for Cincinnati was their leading scorer for most of the year. And he hasn't scored in the last four games. Barely played in the last two. James got past Peavy. Hit the side of the backboard. Good help defense on the baseline by TCU. Nelson the Euro and he curls at home. Reminiscent of Dad's move back in the day. Just a step through at the rim, but TCU doesn't... Get back quick enough on the retreat. And Chisel James, you see what kind of a blur he is at the other end. Mustafa is fouled. And a timeout here in Fort Worth. TCU up by one as both teams try to bolster their tournament resume. Jizzle was Edrin James' nickname when he was playing. It wasn't all that well known. He was playing with the Colts and Cardinals, E. Jizzle or Jizzle. So dad passed the name down to his son, and Jizzle says that allows me to play with an extra edge. It's like my alter ego on the court. That's great to see these ex star sons. Makes you feel a little old when you see Jameer Nelson's son out here. And, and Remembering Edron James and uh, obviously always supporting their kids and their sons. Seen them in a few games this year at Cincinnati. He was there the other night against the Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State game. So Mustafa with the free throws. Xavier Cork back on the floor for TCU. Three point lead nearing the midway mark of the first half. Soft pressure by TCU coming out of that timeout. Cincinnati was down 8 nothing before rallying, and here is Jizzle James missing the three. Good back screen there on the weak side. 
James oh, look out. Up and had his feet set. Look out, J.D. Thomas, the deflection right into the face of his coach, Wes Miller. Up the floor, good job by Cincinnati, just <laughs> getting back again and preventing that fast break. That is item number one when you're facing TCU. Nelson misses the three. Can you match the physicality and can you get back on defense time and time again? These teams are built very similarly in the, how they want to play, and physicality is number one on that list. Well, Bandego couldn't finish the lob. Cincinnati recovers it. James now looking for Bandego again, and they turn it over. Cincinnati doing a good job of racing back. Coles draws the foul, and two free throws coming up. Victor Lockett committing the personal. Good job by Coles. Shot fake, and then the other end just collision at the rim. Shot fake there. Jamie Dixon, you can hear him barking it out like, use your shot fakes. So Lockin gets a breather. Josh Reed checks in. He's given Cincinnati solid minutes the last couple of games. And it should be said, John Newman the third sitting right now with two personals. It's important defensively because Newman is their defensive stopper. Guard the one, two, three, or four. Pressure from TCU. on the timer for James. Lukosius knocks down a triple, his first points today. That's a crusher for CC. They played excellent defense, good ball pressure on the perimeter. They switched all screens and handoffs, but on the closeout in the, cr in the corner, Lukosius had way too much room at the end of the clock. Lukosius starting to show why Wes Miller thought that He's the kind of guy we can build our offense around. Now called on the perimeter against Day Day Thomas. Remember, Lukosius was hit by a car in late November and missed only one game. And he's been on a tear over the last few weeks. See the late close out there by Miller. He just got caught ball watching in the lane and lost track of Lukosius in the corner. He did more damage to the car, by the way, than the injuries he suffered, at least he likes to say that. He broke the windshield. Wes Miller told us hey, he's built like a truck. Forget about the car. Cork couldn't scoop it in. Lukosius has lost the handle. Here comes Miller. Anderson got past Lukosius. Bandago erases it. Got to be aware when you drive into the lane. That Look out. Bandango is going to be there. You've got to make sure when he's in the neighborhood, you've got to make sure you're ready to make a pass. Don't predetermine you're going to take the shot as you dribble drive in. Here, you see Anderson beats Lukosius off the dribble, but he's got to be aware that Bandango is in the neighborhood. I was ready to, Tim. That deflection right after the block. We just lucky. hit our monitors. Don't drink yeah. coffee. <laughs> My death. Didn't that happen to us in Norman? I'm thankful. <laughs> that defense by CB again, not staying close enough to Lukosius. And Seamus Lukosius gives Cincinnati its first lead today. Got to be right up on his shoes on the catch, and he's giving him too much space. He caught ball watching and over helping just a touch on the wing. Ten on the timer. PV lost it. Scooped up by Jizzel James. And James had it stripped. Oh, good job by PV on the recovery. Never gave up on the play with the back tip.
Anderson hit two early threes. Step back two over James. Too long. Cincinnati trying to pump some air back into their bubble after the loss to Oklahoma State. A quad three loss Wednesday night. Thomas puts it in. Timeout Jamie Dixon and TCU. It's an 8-0 run for the Bearcats. Moss Lukosius has been on fire getting to the college football championship. And uh, Jamie Dixon, Dixon's trying to find a little magic in his defense. He has not been happy with some of the defensive efforts and uh, voicing his concern to a lot of individual players right now. Getting beat off the dribble in that last move by Day Day Thomas and not covering Lukosius on the perimeter. Now Lukosius hit a couple of threes. Thomas the layup. TCU, meanwhile, has missed their last four shots from the field. Miller, their leading scorer, down low against Reed. And Miller is fouled. Cincinnati. Yeah, base defense was very good that time. And Miller was off balance. That's kind of a bailout by Cincinnati. They protected down low. You see Reed just holding his ground. He's just got to get his hands straight up in the air. Instead, he goes into the shooter, goes straight up. Make it fine. Not now. You give him two freebies. And Miller, a much improved free throw shooter last year at 65%. He's at 80% this season. And hits them both here. Really part of his overall evolution from small ball big at Texas A&M to a guy who can beat you on the wing here at TCU. He's had a very good season. He's been outstanding. Consistent is the key with Emmanuel Miller. Good shot selection, very good defense. Thomas. And out of bounds to TCU. That time Cork picked up Dede Thomas on the perimeter off a switch and did a real good job moving his feet and then presenting himself with that long 6'9 athleticism at the rim to protect. Cork getting his second start of the year and in back-to-back -back games for the injured Ernest Uday Jr. You see the TCU droughts are unfolding from the floor. And there's Cork at the offensive end. TCU's back in front. Edison with the delivery from the top, dropping a dime. Cross court bounce pass. Perfect at the rim. Skillings from the corner. About the ball movement here in transition, but Cincinnati was able to get back. Miller, 4-3. TCU has answered back with a 7-0 run. That time, that's why TCU put so much pressure on you with their push up the court. That time, Cincinnati did a good job of getting back, not allowing transition basket, but he didn't get matched up properly, which meant Thomas was on Miller, 6-1 versus 6-7. And now a steal for TCU. Tennyson had the deflection. Anderson. Miller blocked on the follow by Reynolds for the foul. Daniel Miller makes so many good plays during the course of the game. But understanding space, and he comes right to the ball, locked and loaded at the top. Now, two years ago, three years ago, beg your pardon, at Texas A&M, he's top 10 in the SEC in scoring and rebounding. He's playing the five. He's playing the center for Buzz Williams. Comes to TCU. Jamie Dixon recruits him. Hey, if you want to be an NBA player, you know at your size, you have to be able to play on the perimeter. And each year here with the Horn Frogs, he has added something to his game. He has, and the impressive thing to me is assist to turnovers. 70 assists, 38 turnovers on the season. He handles the ball, doesn't try to force the threes, he gets to the free throw line with his power, and we've talked about his defense. So nine in a row from the Frogs after Cincinnati went on an 8-0 run. Reynolds against Cork. 
Offline, but a foul. And it's against Cork. I thought Cork did a really good job of just building the wall and going straight up down the middle. He did not let Reynolds get an angle. He's holding his own down there, but just a late little hand up in the face. And Tim, that's two on Cork. Isam Mustafa is at the scores table. Reynolds just a 66% foul shooter, but he hits the first. So Cork exits with the two personals. Jamil Reynolds barely played in the first meeting against TCU. Just eight minutes. He has played a lot more as of late and gives them a presence down low. He was really good for Temple a year ago. He just has to get more comfortable with the system and you can see that's happening now they're trying to throw him the ball on the box nelson with the turnaround great footwork by nelson that time just creating that space taking his time on a fadeaway now reynolds against mustafa and Reynolds hooks it in. Very hard to defend down there because he's so good. He takes his time. Now, I, if I was TCU, I'd take a look at maybe sending a second defender down there to take that away, especially going over the left shoulder. Nelson, not this time. The thing about Reynolds, he's not a good passer. So if he has a lot of space, he's going to be able to find an angle to the rim. But if you double him down there, not sure he's going to make the right decision. Thomas guarded by the taller Emmanuel Miller. Seven to shoot. Lukosius tees it up. And Mustafa comes down with it for the Horn Frogs. Cole spotting up. It's a triple. There's TCU transition basketball at its best. Off the steal, on the floor, push it. Coach against Jamie Dixon in the Diggies. Do you remember his Pittsburgh teams walking it up the floor? It's a very different team now Jamie Dixon has here at TCU. We used to feel that we went into Pittsburgh to play Jamie's team. They weren't the Panthers. They were more like the Steelers. <laughs> it was a football game on, on a basketball court. But walk the ball up, run, your good, run the clock, get a great shot every time, and really play stingy defense. And they still play stingy defense, but I love the way they push the ball. They, take, they read the defense well on fast breaks, too. They don't run to the rim, but that will on opportunity, but then they will look for the threes, and that's a good move by Skillings. The floater for Skillings, Cincinnati's leading scorer. And he has six. TCU's been led by Miller's nine. Coles the drive against Lockin. Trying to go reverse side. And Mustafa tracks it down for a fresh 20 on the shot clock. Nelson with five. Clearing space against James. And another offensive rebound for TCU. Well, that time James tried to run out without getting the ball. Now Cincinnati getting beat on the hustle plays on that last possession. Fouls against Locke in his second. He's doing a very good job on the hustle plays and cutting without the ball. And going back to the fast break discussion. And they do a very good job, Ted, of reading the defense that if the defense runs back and covers the paint first to protect the rim, then they run to the three-point line. If they have open lanes to the basket, they'll do the traditional fast break of three on two, both wings cut to the rim for a layup. But if not, they do a great job of spotting up right out of transition at the three-point line. And Dixon said it before last year when that team led by Mike Miles and Damian Bob, they also led the nation in fast break points. It is too hard in the Big 12 to score against a set defense. They made that a point of emphasis leading into last season. Sure, sure. and then Porter Moser talked about it. 
Jones coach at Oklahoma earlier this season and how they transformed their team into being faster. He understood now after coaching the Big 12 a couple years, we need to be faster. We need to, to Jamie's point, push the pace a little bit more to score and get the game into the 80s. John Newman the third back on the court for Cincinnati with the two personals. Locken also out there playing with two. Newman on the attack. And deflected out of bounds. Under five to shoot here. Beck maybe a little lob at the rim or a pinch to the corner and then a quick handoff to Lacocious. James fires over Anderson, way short. And the shot clock runs out. Now it's very difficult to find a good shot in five seconds against this TCU defense, especially their length. Now right now, so far, I think their, their length has been bothering Cincinnati in the half court. Here Anderson just doing a good job. Straight up, good length on the wing, and then a great contest. Final minute of the first half. Miller finding Coles. And Coles with the finish. Oh, good job by Coles. Just taking his time, squaring up. He had Skillings right there, who's a good defender, but Skillings built the wall. Coles just took his time over the top. Frogs with their largest lead. And Skillings getting free on the interior. Skilling's doing a good job of moving without the ball. You must do that against this TCU defense because they're putting good pressure on the perimeter. And a foul with 8.8 to go. Oh, and Chisel James is first. Cincinnati attempted to trap the ball right in the middle of the floor, which is dangerous, but James extended and bodied up on the ball handler. Kind of a giveaway with 8.8 seconds to go. And a one-and-one one opportunity for Avery Anderson the third, 82% on the year for the product of Justin, Texas. Just 25 miles north of here in Fort Worth. Jamie Dixon recruited him in high school. He played at Northwest High School, scored nearly 3,000 career points. Of course, Anderson first went to Oklahoma State, was on their NCAA tournament team in 21 with Kate Cunningham. And transferred here for his fifth and final year. Final seconds of the half. And a foul on Peavy. Staying in front of Skillings. Of course, TCU has fouls to give. Yep. Just take away that dribble penetration. Be very aggressive on the perimeter. They even have a couple more to give here. 4.7 to go. A foul again, Anderson. Yep. One. Yep. So that's Anderson's first. And again, CC with one more foul to give here. Well, you just got to be careful, though, with this point. You don't want guys getting, picking up their second. Obviously, Anderson sure. could give one away, but take one again, maybe. Oh, fouled in the act of shooting, though, this time. And that's not what you wanted at all if you're Jamie Dixon. And Anderson's hurt. James does a nice job of squaring up on Anderson, and Anderson just illegal guarding space, and James goes in the defender. Don't see how that's a foul anyway. And James creates the contact, shoves the ball into the arm of Anderson. A little body contact, but it's created by... Thomas. Or excuse me, just James. Now, yeah, so Anderson with back-to-back -back fouls here. 
and needed just a little bit of medical attention. All right, one more look. So you don't think this is a foul? This is up. They're looking at that. Yeah, the There's elbow. Thomas. Elbows. So that's that's where I, what I'm saying is the contact is initiated by Thomas with the elbow on Anderson. Now, what the officials probably are saying is that Anderson is in the offensive cylinder of Thomas. So that's where you've kind of got both ends of it. You know, he creates the contact, but he has allowed that space as an offensive player. It was a quick review for the potential flagrant, no flagrant, common foul on Anderson in the act of shooting, and Thomas with three free throws here in the final second. That's a good experience play though by Danny Thomas, just to kind of get the defender off balance, which he did, and that's a tough call for Darren George. I think after looking at it again, which obviously we have the benefit of three or four replays in slow motion, right. I think that's a good call as opposed to making that call in real time. Well, Darren is an experienced official. He's not going to just blow the whistle when he sees incidental contact. And so the first half comes to a close. TCU had the lead to double digits. Cincinnati cuts it to seven half today, and that really hasn't phased Wes Miller's team this year. No, especially on the road. The BYU and UCF games were on the road. And Done very well on the road in this league. Ted Emmer, Tim Welsh, our entire crew. We saw Jacoby Coles there. He has a game high 11 for TCU. Horn Frogs 11 and 2 at home this year. The only losses to Iowa State and Texas. Anderson gives it up. Emmanuel Miller hit one in the first half. Couldn't hit it here, but got his own rebound. These guards have to pinch in on those deep rebounds. Miller with seven. And over the head of Cork to Cincinnati. They kind of forced the issue into Cork. And Dago was right on him. He wasn't. He did not have good low post position. If he did catch it, I don't know what he was going to do with it. Ben Dago kind of gives him a little shove. That's what Jamie Dixon was uh, discussing. That's one way to put it. Cincinnati, though, gives it right back. Miller, right back to Anderson for the bucket. How about that ball movement? Ball movement and speed without the dribble. That is fast break basketball at its best. Oh, nice feed from Lukosius to 10 Skillings Jr. Miller's getting caught ball watching on the weak side, and as soon as Skillings sees that, he's doing a great job of reading his man, and he just back cuts him, face cuts right to the middle of the lane in front of the rim, and he's wide open. Anderson fires. Newman fighting for it, and it's cleared by Cincinnati. Bit of a force that time by Anderson from the perimeter. Skillings on the drive. Oh, fumbled it, and it's a turnover. Anderson had it knocked out of his hands. Oh, and at the other end of the floor, Skilling's remaining down for Cincinnati. Finally, the official stopping action. Yeah, Skilling's needs to get looked at. Skilling's on the drug lost. Lost the ball, seemingly got popped. He's holding his face. Hard to see from that angle. Just a, a stinger to the head. Yeah, maybe the Miller swipe caught him right in the face. A look at that, but that's very incidental. Basketball type play with two guys just colliding by accident.
Yeah, it appears to be a quick review here from Ray Natilli, Darren George, and Brett Smith. One more look here. I'm with you, Tim. I don't think there's anything there. Well, Cincinnati, give them credit with one man down. Still got back and prevented a fast break. TC was trying to race to the rim, but the four other defenders did a good job of protecting the lane. And some skillings. Sophomore on the bench now. PV on the attack. And denied. Newman scoops it in. John Newman, the third, didn't play a lot in that first half, Tim, because of foul trouble. Uh, he can make those plays. Just a smart, experienced veteran. And I like this lineup for TCU with James and Thomas together. Let's see how they do defensively. Offensively, they are very fast. Nelson crossing up Day-Day Thomas. Now in trouble. It's a tie-up. And Cincinnati ball. Darren George called a travel. Raina Tilly called a jump. So either way, Cincinnati's going to retain <laughs> possession. Thomas had seven points in the first half. Jizzle James is in for the Bearcats. Now Lukosius, five to shoot. Over Cork. Bandago, the offensive rebound and a foul. And it's against Peavy, his second. Well, that's for TCU's guards and wings have to give some help and support on Bandango. He's so long, he's very difficult to block out and can't get caught on the perimeter. Bandango does a good job of getting rebounds out of his area because he's so long and athletic. The WAC Defensive Player of the Year last season for Utah Valley, Aziz Bandego. He helped Utah Valley beat Cincinnati in the NIT. Wes Miller said he was the best rim presence we saw all year long. And when Bandego entered the portal, Cincinnati was interested. Yeah, it's interesting. He plays good support defense in the lane. He protects around the basket, but he doesn't block that many shots. About one per game, but he, his presence is felt because he, when he's in the neighborhood, he uses his length not only not to just not to block shots, but to present a good long resistance in the lane. Miller, money, it's a three for TCU. There's TCU again pushing the pace, not only in off a miss, but. In transition, just pushing it up the court. If you don't protect quickly, they'll make you pay, especially Miller on the wing. James, the step back over Coles, pure. The talent is evident from Chisel James. Bandago with the steal. Well, what James and Thomas do when they're in together. They put a lot of pressure on you in the half court and in transition. You must defend. You've got two ball handlers now that can beat you off the bounce. James looking to attack again. This time firing over Anderson. Couldn't hit it. Travian Tennyson, the sharpshooter, didn't take a shot in the first half and missed that one. Tennyson coming off the bench after starting for the last couple of months. Day Day Thomas all the way way for two. Uh, this is what James's presence does for Cincinnati's offense. They really can space the floor. That time they were five out with Bandago setting the pick in the middle of the floor. And once Thomas got by his defender, there was no one there to help. Oh, Cole's left alone and he makes Cincinnati pay. And a timeout for TCU as the Frogs push their lead back to seven. Jacoby Coles has 14. 
today. And in Waco, it went to overtime. Number two, Houston prevailing against 11th-ranked Baylor. Kansas State with a nice win over BYU. And Iowa State holding off West Virginia. Of course, still to come. We look forward to Texas and Kansas, 5 Central on ESPN. Well, K-State still feels like they can make a run at it. Jerome Tang, you know, his positivity and good enough team when they make shots there they can beat anyone in this league as they've proven already by beating kansas at home and today very good win over byu k-state and cincinnati are in that same bucket according to joey brackets being considered for the tournament outside of the next four outs reynolds in the post and he banks it in reynolds is starting to feel more comfortable in his role down low being more aggressive offensively and now the block on Miller, but he's called for the foul. So Jamil Reynolds with his second, and we've got a timeout again. TCU up five at home against Cincinnati. You know, he come to my home for summers. When it came to helping people, the gecko was born ready. And his parents argued with me. They wanted him to become a doctor. I said, no, he wants to do insurance, and he's good at it. Well, sure, he's the Geico Gecko, but I mean, he's my best friend. Like, even back in grade school, while others played house, he protected it. Hi, slow down. His final year with TCU, there was a great article on ESPN.com last month from Myron Metcalf about sons of famous players in college basketball. And Jameer Nelson Jr. says that at first, when he was playing the game, it, it was annoying being the son of Jameer Nelson because he says, I wasn't any good. But his dad encouraged him the whole way. Well, his dad's a great guy. Uh, obviously, we had him in our office at Providence. I should have locked it. <laughs> Billy said yes, but uh, he made a great choice in going to play for Phil Martelli at St. Joe's. And uh, his son has done a great job of getting better. He's obviously at, a, at the right level here at TCU. He has been very impressive. Jamie Dixon says that he knew the family and the family actually reached out to him and TCU when Nelson was in the portal. And he's found a home here. Under 10 to shoot for Cincinnati. Trailing by seven. Thomas pulling up. And he hits. TCU's having some problems with that middle pick and roll now that James and Thomas are in the game because they really have the floor spaced on the perimeter. There's a lot of room and opportunity for those two guards to beat you off the bounce, off the pick and roll. Tennyson knocks down the triple. 43% on the year. Uh, that's why Jamie Dixon likes him. He's a game changer in the half court. Doesn't need much space to rise up. Reed pulling into Anderson. Miller the deflection. Then a steal for TCU. It's an off-balance pass by Reed throwing it backwards. But Skillings comes up with the steal at the other end. Can't go south-north. You've got to go north-south. Keep it. If you're Cincinnati, you need to keep attacking to the lane. Thomas over Miller this time. And a foul. Now against Cincinnati, and if it's on Reynolds, it's his third. The foul against Cincinnati is going to be on number 13, Jamil. It is. His third personal foul. Second team foul on his very best. That hit his Cincinnati. Just going over the back of Isam Mustafa. The closest to Diego. So Thomas comes out for Cincinnati. And Peavy back on the floor for TCU. Here he is. Nelson over the freshman James. Bullseye. That's the three. Well, that certainly looks like his dad. A little change of direction, change of pace. To Killer crossover off the side ball screen. Largest lead of the day for TCU.
Bandego fouled by Cork. Well, this is good defense by Jizzle James. He's got to have a little bit more support on that side the wing ball screen. Bandego is playing off of, just doesn't come up enough to support on that side ball screen. And the drop coverage, though, when Bandego sees James get screened off and he's got a shooter, he's got to come out and protect and make Nelson give the ball up. Now Tim Bandego at the line. He's 0 for 3 today. 62% on the year. One more here for the senior. Make it 0 for 4. Bandego normally very solid from the line for big guy 65%, but the form, but not the roll. Nelson in the paint for two. Oh, this is Samir Nelson at his best, just doing a nice job with the ball. That time moving without the ball, cutting into open space in the lane. It's an 8-0 run for TCU. And James is blocked by Mustafa. Nelson in and out. Offensive rebound, Jacoby Coles couldn't secure it. Last possession, James forcing the issue a little bit. He's got to make a pass in the lane. And an offensive foul against John Newman, the third. And we've got a timeout. Defense first from DCU and at the rim. Mustafa building the wall, protecting. You really can't overstate the gecko's influence on culture. He's got cartoons, breakfast cereals, the best advice. Not unlike the NBA, because everyone's a free agent, believe it or not. Just mind-boggling how that works. But it's the way of the world. You adapt or die, I guess, and uh, Jamie Dix has done a good job of adapting. And even for, you look at Cincinnati's team, the two-time transfers who eventually got cleared, like Jameel Reynolds, as Jameer Nelson turns it over out of the timeout. It's kind of going a little bit too fast out of that timeout. Cincinnati's defense was set. Can't push the pace against a set defense. You've got to take your time, run your stuff. Cincinnati looking for a quad one victory coming off the quad three loss a damaging loss to Oklahoma State Wednesday night at home trailing by 13 11 20 to go Skillings And Nelson soars for the board I like the way TCU hits ahead. They just always have their head up looking for someone that is up the court with the pass. Mustafa working against Bandego. Oh, the savvy move and the foul! He saw Mustafa for the chance at three. Mustafa will be making this move when he's 50, playing in some adult pickup game. <laughs> he's got the footwork. One of those guys, he just makes the little plays. Does a good job of blocking out down the other end. Just runs the floor, does a good job of rim running. He's got terrific footwork. And here, the little scoop du jour, Ted Emery. Good play. 18 minutes the other night against Texas Tech at 10 points, 8 rebounds. 6 points, 3 rebounds here today. Isn't it tough for a guy who's barely played in the conference season now all of a sudden being counted on? Well, it is, but he's older. He's older, he's been through it, he understands that you have to be ready. You have to keep yourself ready at any point to get go in and contribute. You just can't accept where you are. You can accept it, but you've got to make sure you're ready. Thomas snaking in for the basket. And Day Day Thomas can move. Wes Miller's got to continue to go to that pick and roll until PCU proves that they, they can guard Thomas off the bounce going to the rim. Thomas has 13 to lead the Bearcats. Tennyson got another three. 
again, the ball faked by Tennyson. He's a catch and shoot up guy, but that time off the bounce, doing a nice job of gathering himself, getting skilling off his feet. TCU has the lead at 17, their biggest today. Thomas Short, Miller ripping and running. Nelson, an open look. Mustafa, offensive rebound, blocked by Bandago. And out of bounds, it'll stick with TCU. TCU's defense has been elite here in this second half, but here Tennyson, we talked about the good footwork, the little jab step, off the bounce, getting Skillings off his feet, and there you see it, Skillings just not closing out under control. Jamie Dixon calls Tennyson the best shooter in the program since Desmond Bain, now with the Grizzlies. Eight to shoot here for Anderson. Oh, lost it. Loose ball. And Miller picks it up. Almost banked it in at the end of the shot clock. He's being very aggressive, on ball defending, on the glass, and attacking the loose balls. Lukosius hits the triple. Cincinnati really needed that. Miller's just standing there, and Jimmy Dickens says, what are you doing? Stop ball watching and be there on the catch. With mental air by Miller. Third three today for Lukosius. Cincinnati now switching to his zone, trying to change up the pace. Here it comes again, right to us, off the deflection. Seven to shoot here for TCU. I got your back, don't worry. Well, not sure you do. <laughs> I'll trust your word on that one. <laughs> off the shoulder of Lockett and yeah, you, you were never in any danger, don't worry. Hands up, hand down, man down. There you go, and there's... <laughs> there's the example. Coles couldn't bury it, though. Good job by West Miller, though, change it up. I like that zone just for a few possessions just to keep TCU off balance. Lukosius fires again. Oh, Ben Dako with the follow slam. Those deep rebounds are tough to defend. It's tough to defend Van Dango because he's so long. That's why you have to have a group effort on the backboards. Van Dango approaching a double-double. Anderson the no-look and a kick ball. Shot clock resets for 20 here for TCU. He's got to attack the middle of this zone. There seems to be a gap in the middle, putting a lot of pressure on the perimeter, which will open up the middle of the floor. Dennis and the leaner. And who touched it last? Looks like it'll be Cincinnati ball after the timeout. Well, Ben Dango, you better go two, three, four guys put around him on a missed shot because he can do that, elevate. Up high on his face. You know, he come to my home for summers when it came to helping people. The gecko was born ready. And his parents argued with me. They wanted him to become a doctor. I said, no, he wants to... Also healthier, Tim. He missed a game in December with a foot injury. He says he's managed plantar fasciitis all season long. We know how troublesome that can be, how painful that is. He says it's a lot better now, and he's scored in double figures now, six of the last seven games. Big body. Throw his body around in the lane, but you see him in transition. Very smart at finding that open area. Cincinnati down a dozen, under eight to play. Lock in, walked. Lock in just trying to make something happen, very aggressive, but can't find that scoring rhythm that he had early in the season. 
And played a total of five seconds the last two games for Cincinnati. Earned his way back into the rotation today, but has not scored yet. 2-3 zone. The middle is wide open right by the Big 12 logo. Eight to shoot for Coles. And he hits 16 now for Jacoby Coles. The team has always been very good and adept at attacking zones right there, right below the foul line. And out of bounds to TCU. Well, you've got you to know how to attack a zone, but you also have the players to make plays. And this is what Coles gives you, a guy that can find that weakness, that opening in the zone, which is right there in the 2-3, but also be able to make that shot or make a good pass. Right back to him. Near the same spot on the floor. Out to Tennyson. Jizzle James for three. Couldn't get the friendly bounce, and PV with the rebound. That's one and done. TC doing a very good job protecting and contesting. Tennyson misfires again. Now TCU plus two on the glass. Cincinnati has been out-rebounded by only two teams this year. Oh, Bandago blew the jam. One of them was against TCU in that win last month. Anderson off the up fake. Anderson, good job of getting in the gap, though. He's got to make that extra pass when he gets in there as he draws the defender to the middle. Lukosius against Miller as the TCU coaching staff screams out, shooter, shooter. And Lockett is on the scoreboard. Good patience on that possession by Cincinnati. And Lockett finding a way to cut in from the weak side into that middle of that defense and taking his time. Victor Lockett scoring for the first time in five games. That was Cincinnati's leading scorer for most of the year before this downturn. Coles again. Such a matchup problem. Bendago, he looks gassed out there. He's slow to protect in the middle of the zone, and then when he has to come up and guard Coles, he's giving him way too much room. Thomas. Three on two for TCU. And Tennyson does it himself. Timeout for Cincinnati. Right off the top, they're in good position. Joey Brackets has them as a nine seed. The strength of the league helps. They're above 500 in the Big 12. They're in good shape right now. Well, I'll tell you who has made more than three straight tournaments. It's that guy right there, uh, Jamie Dixon. He's a, he is a terrific basketball coach. He's proven it over a long, long period of time and has just done an unbelievable job here at TCU. Really reinvigorating the program. Think of Billy Tubbs' days and what Dixon has done over the last few years is remarkable as James draws the foul. Well, you want to pressure Jizzle James on the top, but you've got to get more in the stance there. Jameer Nelson got a little bit straight up. You've got to be down and low to guard James off the bounce. Dan Skillings Jr. blocked by Mustafa. Out of bounds. It'll stay with the Bearcats. I'll tell you, TC has done a nice job, Tim, against Skillings. Has held him to nine points on four of 12 shooting today. Well, TCU has done a very good job all afternoon long with their defense. They've been rock solid. They're do, doing a lot of switching. They've got back on defense in transition. Got some issues with the ball screens, but other than that, they've been very good, and here they come again. The Frogs always running. Emmanuel Miller puts it in. TCU at its best on the break. Well, they don't try to get the ball to the point guard. Whoever gets it can go. And, you know, unless it's Mustafa, everyone else can take it off the rim and push it themselves, and then everybody else flies down the wing. And the steal by Mustafa. 
Avery Anderson, too much on it. The follow is good. TCU is running away with it, literally. Daniel Miller with the putback out of nowhere. I don't know how he got that ball to go down, but TCU is flying on defense, and then they are pushing it hard the other way. Eight in a row for TCU, up by 20. And now the steal by Anderson. Numbers again. Oh, Miller couldn't catch up to it. Pass was offline. And TCU ball anyway. The timeout is Jameer Nelson says, my bad. Trying to put Emmanuel Miller on the highlight reel yet again. He's already on it. Played the five, he's played the four. Doesn't do it with a lot of flash and dash. Clearly, though, when you're up 20 in a Big 12 game, any against anyone, there's multiple players that are very deserving. But we'll see. We'll have to check in with Steve Schoon later and see who won it. And TCU posts the picture on social media after every win. Who gets the belt? Who is the champ? After a Horn Frog victory. Five to shoot here. Mustafa kicking it out. Anderson, oh, met by Reynolds. And the shot clock runs out. Well, that's not a bad thing, obviously. Using up, the, using up some time while still being aggressive. But TCU won this game down at this end this afternoon. Just good, solid defense. Just rotation-wise, communication-wise, good ball pressure. There's some issues with the dribble, with the Biddle ball screen at times, but. And PV banks it in, another transition basket for TCU. Well, that's the, the key to great coaching is that you make adjustments in game, and that's what TCU did with Jamie Dixon. They, they cleaned up that middle ball screen, they forced it more to the sideline, and they took away James' ability to get to the rim. Reynolds. Nice hook shot. That post game is so good for Jameel Reynolds. He's been flashing it more and more these last few games. Yeah, they're looking for him as well. I think he's demanding the ball a little bit better. He's carving out space. He's making himself available. And then he's taking his time with that nice jump hook. But to your point, Tim, defensively, TCU holding Skillings to nine points on four of 13 shooting. James, four points on two of 10. PB, shot clock dwindling. Nelson. Well, TCU Ted came in to the, today's game with a little bit of an edge. You could tell the coaching staff, the players, they were they were locked in with focus early because of the fact they were they were stunned the other night. They were stunned the other night in Lubbock. You know, they felt like they, they gave one away. Although TCU Texas Tech came back and earned the win, but you know when you're up ten with six minutes to go, obviously you know the game's not over, but you it really hurts after if you don't get it done. So Reynolds at the line. I asked Jamie Dixon yesterday after practice. It, it, you had the experience in the Big East, obviously the years here at TCU in the Big 12. Did, does it ever wear on you? Just night in, night out. Here we are in late February, right? The dog days of the season. And he says, I'm used to it. This is just what you prepare for every single year. 18 rounds, 18 games where you are fighting every single night. Yeah, and, and when he says that, what he's used to is that you can't get too high or too low after a win or a loss. You know the next day you've got to bounce back more than anyone else because if you're let, letting losses hang on top of your shoulders and you come in and your team sees that, then your team's going to take on that personality. And in this league, if that happens, you're going to go on a four-game losing streak very quickly. So his experience is invaluable coaching at the highest level and understanding that it's next game, next game up. And Cincinnati will certainly have to understand that with what's to come. As a turnover here by C.J. Anthony, stepping out of bounds in the corner. What were you saying in the first half? <laughs> you said it was once a game, but that's, yeah, that's number two. two. Okay. Here we go with a walk-on. Good point here by TCU to 
These uh, young guys in who give it all every day. But tremendous effort, though, by TCU today because this is a good Cincinnati team that has played, as we said earlier, very well on the road. Need, needed this win, you know, with this tough two-game stretch coming up. They'll go to Houston as soon as this game ends, and what awaits them there is not going to be fun either. No, not at all. And for Cincinnati, this will be their first blowout loss as a Big 12 team. All eight of their previous losses in conference play had been by single digits, seven of them by five points or fewer. Anderson, one of the scholarship players still on the floor, had it blocked. And Mustafa, the offensive board, and he throws it away. And it's a shot clock violation. Jamie Dixon, as, as we know very well, still coaching. It, yeah. Not happy with the oh, yeah. turnover. Oh, yeah. And that's what all great coaches do is watch Kelvin Sampson at Houston. He'll be up 30 with a minute to go. You better run the right thing or else you're going to hear it. Now Cincinnati will have another opportunity on the road. Tuesday at number two Houston close game up in Cincinnati earlier this year between those two former American Conference foes and with That is what awaits the Bearcats after TCU Ran away with this one. Well, they put it up in the final seconds Trey Stewart the walk-on couldn't do it had it blocked. Anthony at the other end. Time runs out. TCU with 25 fast break points here today. Jamie Dixon's team back in the win column after the disappointment in Lubbock.